asteroid scientist exposes worrying threat that keeps her awake every night. Katie Weston of Express UK reports asteroid expert and also planetary scientist Megan Brooke Sayal named the worrying threat to the planet that keeps her awake every night. Asteroid Bennu. Some people call it a small planet. Asteroid 101955 Bennu, formerly known as 1999RQ36. It's a carbonaceous space rock in the Apollo group and it was first discovered by NASA's Linear Project recently just September 11th, 1999. The space rock is right now the target of NASA's Osiris-Rex mission. So they quickly got a mission together after they found it because of its expected trajectory. This mission is intended to return samples to Earth in a couple of years, in 2023, and it will help researchers determine its possible outcome. Planetary scientist Megan Brooke Sayal said Bennu has a very small chance of impacting our Earth, claiming the threat of smaller asteroids not yet discovered is even more of a concern. Well, with the uh, video just before this one, we're talking about the NASA internal email having to do with the surprise of a near hit of an asteroid that it should have caught. And they only found it 24 hours before it came at us, and it was found by a Brazil space agency, Brazil telescope, and not NASA. And it was big enough that it should have been tracked by NASA. And they said, well, they couldn't track it because of the glow of the stars in the sky. Is that an excuse? Really, is that an excuse? Um, I'm really dismayed at space, especially I'm, I'm dismayed at NASA because of the tremendous amounts. I mean, there's no other space agency that has the amounts of money and and the and the uh, technology that NASA has. I mean, after all, they've landed a man on the moon, um, and yet we have amateur astronomers discovering celestial bodies before NASA does. The example of the Borisov interstellar comet that was found at the beginning of uh, August by an amateur astronomer, uh, Yenadi uh, Borisov of Crimea. All right? There's a lot of amateur astronomers. A, a son of a friend of mine, uh, he spends a lot of money on his telescopes. He, he, you know, they have these competitions. They take pictures. They take videos of things. And then they have exhibits and they get prizes. And they're very serious about what they do. I mean, they actually they love it. Of course, it's in their blood. And I guess that's how uh, Borisov found, happened to find the um, interstellar comet coming in at us. And uh, it will be at us and we'll be able to see it up to, a, you know, up to, from now. If you, if you point your telescope towards Mars, it's in between Mars and Earth. And it'll be there at, until the end of October, I think. Um, okay, so now we're talking about Bennu. And uh, this scientist, this woman here, is very concerned about the ones that we don't see coming at us, like the one that we just missed, according to the NASA internal email. Uh, and she's right, because these are city killer asteroids, and they come in just about every hundred years, she said, if not a thousand. Now, Bennu is a really interesting asteroid. It's worthy of a lot of study because, it, she says, it has this very convenient orbit where it comes by the Earth a lot, and we can study it a lot, she says. In terms of what keeps me awake at night, she says, Bennu is not that. I worry about all of the thousands of asteroids that are not tens or hundreds of meters in size that we have not yet found. But Bennu itself is not something I would worry about as a planetary scientist planetary scientists. Now NASA's new mission will touch back down in four years and scientists will have all the details they need uh, to make a firm decision on the true threat of Bennu. They'll know what kind of material it's made of and perhaps some way to mitigate it so that it doesn't come anywhere near us, close to us. 
Osiris Rex will help refine their understanding of Bennu's orbit. The principal investigator, Dante Loretta, of the Lunar and Planetary Laboratory, University of Arizona, revealed more recently, he told Space.com in 2016, quote, our uncertainties will shrink so that will allow us to recalculate the impact probability. We don't know which direction it will go. It could go down because we just eliminated a bunch of possible keyholes that Bennu may hit, he says. Uh, or it may go up because the area that's left, we have a higher concentration of keyholes compared to the overall area of the uncertainty plane, end quote. Now, a serious Rex work will also help researchers better understand the Yarkovsky effect. You know that effect. We've been talking about that lately. That's what caused one of the uh, July 25th asteroids. The, one of them was uh, beyond the moon. It was supposed to go safely sailing into the wild black yonder of space, but it didn't. It came careening into the Caribbean Ocean. And that's what uh, sparked the astronomers coming out to explain what the Yarkovsky effect is. That's when the sun's rays hit the asteroid, causing the uh, surface of the celestial body to heat up and have a temperature differential, causing the body to tumble on its axis. And it's as if, in a way, you're striking it. And that caused the this particular asteroid to careen off its path, its trajectory, and uh, be pulled in by Earth's gravity, and it came careening into the Caribbean Sea. We're lucky. We're, we've been hit recently over the sea and over the oceans. That one came into the Caribbean Ocean a couple of months back. In the winter, we were hit in the North Pacific Ocean, just south of the Aleutian Islands of Alaska. Okay, so that impacted there, but thank goodness it was an area that was not populated. And even, even if a tsunami came up, it was not an area that was uh, inundated by, uh, by a tsunami that, that was in the populated area. So we were lucky in these, both of these cases that it was not, they did not, they did not hit unpopulated areas. So, um... Osiris' Rex work will also help researchers better understand this Yarkovsky effect. Either way, scientists have assured Bennu is not big enough to end life on Earth. That's very comforting. Some life will live, in other words, they're saying. Such an impact would likely devastate the local area, but fall short of wiping out civilization or causing a mass extinction. So, Bennu may have... Okay, uh, wiping out civilization in local areas, maybe half the world or a quarter of the world, but not the whole world. Okay, that's comforting, don't you think? Now, astronomers estimate that a space rock must be at least 0 0.6 miles wide to cause worldwide catastrophe. The asteroid thought to have wiped out the dinosaurs, or at least to have finished them off, was probably about 6 miles across. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.